Okay, so this was actually a pretty awesome start to this filler episode. I cannot deny it at all. I was actually like, yo, this is actually some pretty interesting stuff. Especially Virgo's new look, I'm just saying. So the first bits of this episode, for the most part, I felt shouldn't have been as long as it was, kind of fighting that fake slug or whatever, or the fake little mission that they were on, and kind of setting up all the, you know, the mission that they wanted to go on. I think the beginning of this episode kind of felt a little bit draggish, but once we started getting an idea of what was going on, ultimately it just picked it up and ran with it. Because after we found out about the Celestial Spirits being away and kind of understanding what's really going on, it really took off. I mean, for starters, the character designs for the revamped Celestial Spirits, they all look beast, especially out of all them Loki. He looks like he's out of Saint Seiya, Gold Saint or something with that crazy armor. And if you notice, their personalities as well are basically the exact opposite in a way. It's kind of sort of like an Edelos type of way with these particular characters because now it's like, okay, if this girl wanted to be dominated, now she wants to dominate. If Loki was more chill, laid back, ladies, man, he's more stylish and more more out there, more outspoken and things like that. So you see all of the characters, their personalities are the exact opposite. And already it's making you wonder who's responsible for this? Why are they doing this? How did they do this? Where's the Celestial Spirit King? Did they lock him away? Did they get away with it? So it's making you wonder a couple different things about that. Who knows? Maybe the Celestial Spirit King went on vacation or some shit and somebody broke in and fucking just started messing with everyone. Or it could have something to do with all the Celestial Spirits being so damn happy from what Lucy gave them. And it also built them up as well because the Celestial spirits like the normal ones i honestly think natsu could probably for the most part except maybe loki could probably take all of them out and maybe aquarius might be able to put up a good fight as well but for the most part if it was just the regular people they could be pretty easily defeated by natsu but these people they actually prove to be a threat like when natsu has to retreat with lucy it's like oh okay so they're actually putting up a decent fight i will say out of all the designs i was kind of like when they had the lowly version of Aquarius, I was like, can we please get the other Aquarius back? Which kind of makes me hope that Aquarius is one of the first people to come back and help out Lucy because it would be some interesting foreshadowing for later events. Manga readers kind of understand where I'm going with that. And I'm imagining based on what they said at the end of the episode where they want true freedom, they probably mean killing Lucy and Yukino to get their freedom. Well, for the most part, these people need to kill Lucy. I think Yukino only has like two keys anyway, so those spirits whatever probably want to kill her as well but ultimately it's like i'm imagining that's their goal and that's their mission because if i'm correct the only way to get out of a contract is for the person to die because we've seen that in the past that's the only way they can get out of the contract or if you let them out and lucy ain't gonna want to let them out and honestly like i like lucy as a character she's you know whatever but ultimately this episode i was kind of like oh it felt so painful with the friendship shit like you're my friends no stop it not so it's like they're beating the fuck out of you. There's obviously something wrong. Maybe you should kick their ass and find out instead of just yelling out, No, stop, they're my friends. But ultimately, I'm not going to lie. I was very surprised for a filler episode for the beginning. This was a very good start. I wish the beginning of the episode wasn't so draggy with kind of like, you know, them picking a mission and then her having the whip fight with the giant slug or whatever. So those parts were a little bit slow. But again, once it picked up, it was just like, this is very good stuff, and this was a very good introduction to this filler arc. So I'm giving this episode 8 out of 10. Really enjoyed it. The animation and art look good for the most part in this episode as well. So I'm like, let's see where it goes. Again, I just hope we don't have more of like that beginning of the episode because like the beginning of this episode is like oh this feels straight up like filler but then once the villains started getting introduced and we started understanding the plot it actually felt like this could be canon so i'm liking where it's going but let me know what you guys think of this first of all who do you think started all this where's the celestial spirit king why are they evil like this it seems as though they kind of had their minds reset or something and that's why they're doing this as well and since the silver spirits can come through it's making me wonder what is the difference with the gold and the silver? Could it be that an old gold one went rogue or somebody broke into the gold? It makes you wonder that as well. And your thoughts of the episode? Honestly, I enjoyed it and I felt like if we're going to have filler, let it be some good stuff. And so far, this looks like good stuff. But that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked anything you had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, if you can do so as well, that'd be awesome. I'm Finette World. And as always, people, have an awesome day.